wants to be loved by somebody, yeah. Take a younger Greetings, thank you for joining in Conversations of a Soul. I am one of your co-hosts, Dr. Kiki Michelle. And Mr. Carlisle E. Williams coming to you live right here in the beautiful, sunny Atlanta, Georgia. ATL feels like it's summertime, y'all. Oh, it feels so good. This Isn't time. it amazing? Yes. I just love good, clean, fresh. It's like the summertime. It does. Already. Summer, summer, fresh summertime. Fresh. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Coming from an international designer and stylist. Yes. I appreciate that. Awesome. You're looking right. spiffy yourself. Oh, you know, I, I was out barbecuing today. <gasps> You yeah, threw I, something on the grill. Ooh, what hit you today? Oh, that sunshine, I think. Sunshine. It's April. Wow. Already. And in the 70s and 80s, already. Whew, I tell you. Welcome to Conversations of the Soul. I yes. can't wait to taste some of that barbecue. Did I you know. save me some? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So. We got <laughs> ribs. <laughs> Chicken. You name it. You name it. Yeah. You, you just want people to know you can cook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we throw down. No, you time. know. Yes, yes. I mean, the hamburgers are, are sizzling. Yes, they are sizzling. Hot dogs and hamburgers. Beef hot dogs, that is. Yeah, because, you yeah. know, we're trying to chill out on the pork. Yes, you know what I mean? Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Just call us if you want to come over and, and grab your burger. Somebody think they know how to cook. Okay. So listen, we're going to get started. And we are excited so about conversations of the soul. Oh, yeah. You've been on hiatus out being oh, an actor. Oh, gee. We missed you. Oh, thank you. Thank yes. you. I missed you guys. And, and, and I checked out the uh, broadcast. You did an amazing job without me. Thank you. I was surprised you couldn't. But... I know you could. I have faith in I'm you. I'm going to. I have faith in you. You know it. I'm uh, studying to show myself quiet. Yes, Isn't that a scripture, yes, y'all? Yes, yeah. You know how it is. You know. And Coach K. Shout out to Coach K in his absence. Yes. yes. So we're going to move it along. Our subject today is all eyes on Minnesota. Mm. Uh, again. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so unless you're just skyrocketing to earth, you are aware of last summer was like a racial hotbed. Like, oh, yeah. It was the climate racially was very, very sensitive. It was heated. And so George Floyd, the death of George Floyd is one of the reasons why that an already um, suppressed emotional climate kind of took off. We we're dealing with the pandemic, people yes. were losing their jobs, yes. you didn't know what was going on, people were losing their lives. And then on top of that, it was the George Floyd um, murder. Really, it was a murder. Was a murder. So all eyes are on Minnesota right now because of the trial. So what do you think about the trial so far, Mr. Carlisle? Um, you know, I really don't want to watch it, mm. to be honest with you, because um, they're trying to put uh, George Floyd, you know, on trial, <laughs> you know, for what he used to do and things that he have done uh, before, you know, uh, being in this uh, situation with the police officer. And um, I just don't like the, uh, the climate, you know, and, and, and what's been said about uh, him and his, his girlfriend and, and uh, his family, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not um, George Floyd being on trial. That part, right, right. I'm with you, it's like, Okay, so it's bad enough that we had to witness this horrific murder. I mean, right. there's no other word. I mean, listen, I'm going to just say, call it what it is, okay? Yeah. We had to call witness this horrific. 
right. We witnessed it. And then you have um, prosecutors doing their job. We understand they have a job to do, but uh, it's, it's a little much. It's asking a lot to refresh those wounds. Like anybody who had an opinion either way. Some people felt like he deserved what happened. He should have complied. Some people felt like he was murdered and that was wrong and another Rodney King and, and all these other mm-hmm. Black men who were being killed. So I guess my concern is we understand that when you're going through a trial, it will renew and open up some wounds. We get that. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, my concern is how It seems like they're trying to do everything possible to justify what happened that somehow he deserved it. Oh, he was on drugs. Oh, he relapsed. Um, Today I heard, because like you, I really don't want to watch it. Like they doing too much. It it, it pulls on your spirit to even think that this man uh, has lost his life and is no longer with us because of the actions of someone in power who I personally believe abused his power. But then to also signal that at a point uh, today, the bystanders and onlookers were distracting the police officers is why this happened. Really? Um, I, you know, the distraction and, uh, I, and then I feel sorry, you know, well, in a way for, um, the young man to, uh, that worked at the store and he, he feels so bad and, and, uh, that he, he, ta- he's, he's taking the blame for, for the death. You know, he, he said he's, if it wasn't for him, you know, and the $20 bill, that was a counterfeit $20 bill and him bringing it up, this would never happen. And so um, he feel very sad about it. Matter of fact, he stopped working at this store as well, you know, because of it. And, um, and it's hard for him to get on with his life. And so when he was testifying, he told and said all that as well. And, um, but, um, <clears throat> I'm just verifying if this volume is up. I'm sorry. Hold right there. Okay. It's still there. Okay. <clears throat> I can do I can mm-hmm. <clears throat> So it's it's sad. So that, yeah. It's sad that um, he's, he says he is on his spirit, you know, and um, he can't rest because uh, what had happened, he feel like it's, it's because of him, you know, that all this had came about and the death of uh, George Floyd. But uh, on a lighter note as well, um, we had prayer visual, um, you know, um, <clears throat> They, they came out and, and prayed, you know, with the family, um, and and it's, it's 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 hard, you know, for them to go through this on a daily basis, you know, um, every day in the courtroom, reliving what happened, and um, you know, going to the trial, his brother and family, and all like that, you know, we we feel their pain, you know, the nation feel their pain and um, hope that um, justice will be served, you know? Well, you know, I can understand that whole guilt process um, from the uh, store clerk's point of view. But my question is, if there were counterfeit bills exchanged why did you just not accept it? Why would you accept it and then turn around and make a big deal about it and call the police and stuff? If you knew or suspected money was counterfeit, then most people hold it up, look at it, look for certain signals and, and symbols on the, on the money to determine that it's not real and say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, we're not able to accept this. 
right you there accepted there. it mm-hmm. and then went and told your boss and then called there it, it seems like guilt is what he deserves and i'm a forgiving person i'm very compassionate that's true but at a point there were several times when you could have said oh you know what let me chill right but you accepted it you gave the man back money from a counterfeit money which now you're acting like he stole money technically because he cashed a 20 dollar bill must have gotten changed then you told your boss then you called the police you chased after him. It, it's like there was a progression of several road bumps and and, and red lights. You ran. So to now have guilt uh, as your portion, I don't feel sympathy for him. I mean, and I might that might sound harsh, but every single last one of us have um, what we call a governor. You you have something inside of you that say, you know what, that's enough, or you know what you shouldn't do that or or something so now this man has has lost his life it has made international news it's it's awoken or awakened several um scenarios of hate and harm and 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 open up other wounds now you want to sit up there and talk about you feel some kind of way because you didn't take out the the um, counterfeit pen to check you know, do they even still have those? Like yes. you're a business, you should yeah. use the tools. If you don't have a pen, they have some kind of machine you can run a bill through. It, it, you should not have completed the transaction if at, per chance you look at it up in the light. Yeah. Something. And then did George even know it was counterfeit? He may not have even sure. have known it was That's counterfeit. Right. So right. all of this, you as a as a retail associate it is your obligation and responsibility to say uh well sir i'm sorry uh we can't accept this for whatever reason you didn't do that but you then you had this passive aggressive behavior like okay yeah it's okay have a good day and then behind the scene oh yeah but he's gonna you know we're gonna make him pay you're getting the portion that you put out mm-hmm. okay um and, you know, with, with George's uh, girlfriend, people are trying to make it seem like when he was laying there calling for his mama, he was calling for his girlfriend. What difference will it make if he called his his uh, woman mama? Right. The man was yeah. fighting for his life. He was begging That's for right. help. So it, it, it sometimes it's some of these angles that keep coming up. It, it makes it difficult to even think that these people who are the prosecutors, if they even really have a soul, Cause like if you if you're a human, certain angles you wouldn't even pick up. I mean, just put your client on the stand who's obviously guilty and, and try to plead for a lesser charge. Don't make it seem like oh he was. You could tell he was back on drugs, huh? Oh well, what was he using? You know, trying to paint this picture. This man is gone on and not in a position to defend himself. Right. So why is it that every trial and I feel like we're having too many of these trials where people in authority are actually taking it upon themselves to kill somebody and stand behind their decision mm-hmm. and to flip it we have too we're having too many of these these jury cases okay and the person is not there to defend themselves and and nine times out of ten these folks get a slap on the wrist or some type of immunity and it's crazy that that, that has to happen every time every time and um they're just able to walk away, you know, like, and, and like nothing happened. Okay, right. next. Okay. Um, maybe you can catch up with us the next time and have a better, you know, prosecutor, attorney or whatever, you know, and, and just just thinking as a retailer, those people who, who um, stores and businesses that got destroyed because of the fire and, and the rioting, um, oh, yeah. the, uh, <clears throat> This one um, black businessman, um, he was about to open up his new uh, restaurant, and um, I mean um, that that very same week, and so everything was completely destroyed, uh, and his insurance and people in the area for you know no, to come out, they have labeled that now, you know. Um, like um, we we have a, a, a what, what do you call it uh, uh, 
an area uninhabitable. Yeah, yeah, devastation mm. or you know, and um, and it's hard to be you know for them to rebuild there. Wow. So now they had to pick up and find them another location or uh, or see what you know their insurance policy is going to. Uh, how that's going to hold up, you know, because it's, you know, you put your all into building up a business to start a business and then the week of the opening, okay, you just see everything just go up in mm -hmm. flames, you know, uh, because what had happened, you know, in that gen, you know, in that city. So uh, it, it's, it's sad that they had to fall like that, the chips are uh, just like it, they are, you know, uh, they're out of a business, you know, and anytime there's a riot, you know, your whole city goes down, you know, and your your grandmother uh, um, and, and your family corner store is gone, you know, and then they got to go way across town to, you know, to even shop, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind, of, kind of hard for that to be even rebuilt, you know, because once something like that happens, it takes years and years to rebuild, right. you know, and bring that community back again. So the the, the 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 people and the citizens, they're the ones that's really suffering, you know, you know, for what has happened. Uh, in the long term, you know, it's going to take a while before they get back, you know, to where it, what it used to be that neighborhood, you know, um, that was um, affected by it. And uh, it's, it's sad for those that, that uh, the business owners, you know, because it was and several black business owners that, that I know that was, um, you know, uh, businesses that were destroyed. So uh, what, what do you think about that? Well, you know, I think that, that um, that's a valuable point, um, but sometimes in war, there are casualties of war. And um, at a point, I think people have reached the limit of just being a, just being gunned down or beat down or choked down or, you know, at a point, you know, first of all, Minnesota, that's not the first high profile uh, race related incident. True. So um, just that area within itself in its own bubble, mm -hmm. tensions are at an all time high. Right, right. Add that to the pandemic, and the whole nation is like, people heard George Floyd call for his mom and it resonated with every mom. People saw his black face and it resonated with every person who knows a black person. You know, even if it's an interracial relationship, they saw their spouse, they saw their, their nephew, their cousin, their son, their father. And so at a point, people are tired. It's like, okay, you, you had, um, I mean, we can go on naming people, <laughs> Mike Brown, you know, it, it, we're tired of hashtags that are useless in a sense because people are dying for nothing and let's transition to here lately, you know, um, those of the Asian community, they've been oh, attacked. Wow. Yes, yes. They've been gunned down, they've been hit, punched, stumped, minding their own business. People who even look like they may be Asian must have been wow. mistaking identity. And it just happened right there in New York. Uh, you know, the lady that was, um, uh, she, now, some may say that she resembled, you know, an, an Asian, you know, uh, person, you know, but she was, she was just, you know, a mix, you know, a mixed race. And she happened to be walking, uh, and she used to be a news reporter, right? I saw you know, that. and right. uh, somebody sucker punched her so hard, you know, and 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 knocked her. Knocked, I mean, knocked her out, you know. And that was so sad that people are just tagging people like that, you know, and blaming the Asian. I mean, cross her killing, you know, uh, and what happened here in Atlanta, you know, with with the um, spas, with the spas, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And the gentleman going in and shooting up several spas here, you know, and just taking it out on them, on the Asians. And then the elderly people, because, you know, you see a lot of elderly uh, Asians walking around by themselves. by themselves, you know, and getting exercises, you know, uh, walking and, you know, and they're up there in the age, you can tell they're, you know, 80-ish and, and, and older, 
you know, and um, they are really um, attacking these people. And is that a, a carryover from the Trump administration with the quote unquote Asian flu comments? We don't know. We don't know. And I do want to give respect to the families of some of the people that were killed needlessly in the slayings. Yes. in the spas yes. here in Atlanta because mm -hmm. not everybody was Asian. Certain people was just there right. to get a massage right. and they lost their life. Um, right. I recall hearing of a, a one man who said he heard the commotion and he hid behind the curtains right. and mm -hmm. that's how he survived. So Because right. his wife was there uh, or something too and yeah, and, and uh, you have to be uh, in that vicinity and, and hear and um, but uh, they, they really had uh, you know big response you know on um social media and but let uh, me just okay and, go ahead and, <laughs> yes and, and 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 raising money you know for the for the for the victims you know uh they came out you know i mean uh, i mean over a million dollars big support you know, uh, yes you know from around the country around the world so let me play devil's advocate here i don't think anybody should lose their life I mean, if they are 150 years old and have lived a full life, I feel like they should keep living. Life and death is not in my hands. So um, so I don't believe that anybody should lose their life. But just think about with Minnesota. And let's think about George Floyd. And let's think about all the Black people who have lost their life needlessly. I mean, if they're if if you're busting in like Brianna Taylor, you know she's sleep in her room in her house, worked. She had, she that you know had a living, was a responsible citizen. But every time they would actually dig up something that was a questionable arrangement to make it seem like this person um, pretty much got what they deserve or their their old was life caught up. Drugs. With them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So if we look at all these situations where these people are losing their lives, nine times out of 10, if you look at another scenario, such as the Asian um, spa shootings and different pockets throughout the country, these gummen walk, they walk away. They have the privilege to turn themselves in. Right. Like, Let's stop and get you a hamburger, sweetie. Are you thirsty? Right, Let me get right. you something to drink. Mm -hmm. Black folks can be having a hand up, sitting there eating dinner with their own family, laying in bed, complying in handcuffs. You got three people leaning on their body with all their dead weight on the person, and you still don't have mercy so that they right. can walk away with their lives. I think that's the most troubling thing because Black folks have to sit here and keep replaying this narrative new city new person new set of circumstances same old storyline but then a quote-unquote lone wolf is what they they'll call people who are not black right go in and shoot up everybody because oh he's stressed out he's having a bad day remember the um the chief of police made the comment about the guy who shot and killed every one of these three spas mm -hmm. in atlanta mm -hmm. oh yeah i guess he was having a bad day yes <laughs> do you know how many people have bad days and, and, and trying to harm right. someone never even comes up. Right. It's like right. you're you're giving these people a excuse and yes. a narrative for their trial, mm -hmm. so that it, there can be some level of sympathy and they get the better end of the stick. Right, right, exactly, exactly. You know, I I I have a problem with that, and because it's happening happening more and more. You know, it it's, does. It's happening more over and, more. and over again. Over and, and over again. I don't know what we can do. I think that, you know, with the whole Martin Luther King, which of course he, you know, we just celebrated his birthday a couple of days ago. And, mm -hmm. you know, with the whole Martin Luther King thought process is nonviolence, you know, let's follow the well, book. Of him being shot. It wasn't of him being killed. Yes. My bad. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So we just, you know, commemorate him a couple of days ago. And, you know, his his whole point in trying to get um, equal justice and and life being fair for people of color, his whole thing was nonviolence. Right. And there's a group that totally supports that and are for that wherever. And then there's other people who like to take the listen, we've been kind, we've right. been nonviolent, we've followed peace, mm -hmm. we're tired. 
And it's like if you if you back someone up into a corner, you don't determine when they decide enough is enough. They're gonna come out fighting. So at a point, you know, what can we do? I mean, because I think you know, even when I sit in other circles and people who don't look like me, most people feel the same way. They want to help. They want oh. some to be done. They want somehow us to reach around this whole scenario and, and live a better life. Um, some people are very upset with the history that their families have, the part they play with history. You know, if they were not black, if they owned slaves or, or if they taught that, you know, you know, other people that weren't like them are different or inferior, they're trying to reframe the narrative. So what do you think we can do such that we can get through to a space of value? of respect you know that's um, that's a hard uh question to to answer uh, because we've been trying now for oh, so how many years and mm -hmm. it just seemed like there's not an answer uh i mean we prayed when you've been preached to you've been i mean just uh i mean we just don't know exactly what we have marched <laughs> we have protest you know and still the same thing, you know, and, and even what's going on, you know, with the with the new law that uh, been passed, you know. You better stop reading this, my brain. By, by this governor here in, in Georgia, Georgia, you know, and uh, about voting, not being able to have water in the line. And bring, and somebody. bring somebody. So this and that. If you're standing I'll in be, line and I go and bring you something to eat, does that mean I could potentially be facing charges for bringing you something to eat like it was written <laughs> yes you know and now they're trying to reword it you it's know, too late and, and yes we and have to sign the, the 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 uh sign it behind closed doors and wouldn't let anybody black in there to even, or any representative, or you know, any black representative. Here, oh no, it was some white representatives in there. What happened to know? her arm? And, and then uh, uh, our um, representative from from Georgia, she tried to go in and knocked on the door so she could be let in, and um, she was arrested. You know, and you know, and led away. That's right, arrested like and led a away. Wild you know, just like she was, uh, just somebody off the street. And they didn't do that when it was working in the U.S. Uh, Capitol building. I was or, just getting ready to bring that you up. You couldn't grab nobody like that, you know. But you know what color she was, so they want. They felt like they was an authority and wanted to exercise that that badge that they have, you know, and um, to go in on arrest her. Now she was asking, under what, you know, what are you arresting me for? You know, I mean. Do you know what you're arresting me for? You know, you know they couldn't even cite which 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 uh, um, law it was that they was arresting them for. for you know, uh, and so they finally got the book out uh, after she got arrested. You know, to find out. Okay, let's find out which what can we uh, say that she's arrested for. She's standing there knocking know. on the door. She has on her badge. You know that. Um, oh, she's that. She, she, she's. Uh, stepped on his toe she stopped um <laughs> she stopped his toe that was one of okay them, you know, okay you know assaulting you know a, uh, a police a officer yes, okay yes. so it's gonna play out like everything does in the court of law but for those who have always want to follow the rules and go through the right process when you change the rules that we're trying to now follow that's another type of Jim Crow sabotage. And, you know, this is, I, I have this little coaster that I set my coffee and hot items on. And it clearly says, this is not your mama's civil rights movement. Okay. And I picked that up from uh, uh, African-American artist um, store. I guess uh, the artist was the African-American woman who actually created it, several okay. different coasters. So I said, oh yeah, I'll support. But I'm reminded every day yes. that the things that that individuals took all along is not something that this generation will even tolerate. And we need to understand it's it's not just all black people swelling up feeling some kind of way. It's all races are saying, you know what? Yes. I'm 
not even black. But you know, I don't like the way they're doing you. We're on your side. Right. So we've got to be careful not to alienate people because of the way they look. There are also people who um, are per per persons of color and they don't see anything wrong. They feel like, you know, well, this was, they deserve this, you know? So we don't want to judge, but we have to understand the power of the dollar. Our dollar is powerful. When they don't respect you, hit them in the pockets. Violence does not work. It doesn't. It's going to breed more problems. Just like when people got upset in Minnesota or any city, they, they tore up Atlanta during that time too. People's emotions get the best of them right. and they want to just strike out. But at a point, you're destroying all of your own community. Like after everything is said and done and dust settles, now you have to look at all these eyesores right. and what it up building. Right. Yeah, Property values leaving and things mm -hmm. of that nature, yeah. right? Yeah. So in your neighborhood. Right. And unfortunately, it's a cycle every city. And we've got to um hold our lawmakers accountable. Everyone comes and they go campaign at your church, they'll campaign um, on the sidewalk in the store, you can't even get outside for having all these flyers on your vehicle. So when they're campaigning to get into office, it's, oh, I'm gonna do oh. this, I'm gonna take, yeah, let us know. Here's my never call me, I love to represent you. And then when they're in, the same things that they said that they will work on, and I understand it's not just them, but the same things that they said they'll work on, now we can't hear you, where you at, you know? Did we get our um, Asian Lives Matter? T-shirt yet? Have you seen those? I haven't. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, um, because you had the Black Lives Matter, now the Asian Lives Matter, but you don't see you know, everybody running out and buying those in support. But they got a lot of support, you know, because they stood up and supported Black Lives Matter. You know, I just wanted to make that point because they were wearing oh, oh. t-shirts that said Black Lives Matter. A lot of Asian people support it and watch, okay. you know? So, you know, it should be the same thing, you know, uh, with them, you know, in support of, 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 you know, Asian Lives Matter. So in that same vein, okay. So I know, and, and listen, my, my prayer is that Whatever is ruled in the verdict for this George Floyd trial, mm -hmm. it better be fair. It better be right because you I'm telling it you, it might be you World see, War Three. You, you can feel it. Yeah. But I want to know: Well, where where are the folks that were organizing and and protesting, going to the Capitol and going from city to city? And oh, and there was huge piles of blocks waiting at almost every Black Lives Matter rally. Where are those people when a vote has been attacked here in Georgia? I, I, you know, everybody might be back to work now, or you might be busy, or it might not be a big of a it's deal. Too late because it's already have been signed and into. I don't you think know, it's ever too but, late. But then, on top of that, you know, you still have those that are uh, trying to. I, I mean, reverse it. You know. Uh, but it's gonna take some time, you know, uh, and then, then you have these people that are in these positions now, you know, they, they seem like they're operating in a snail pace, you know, I mean, so, How about so, that? so slow, <laughs> you know, I mean, what happened to the mayor knowing about the bill being signed the day of the event? Was she not told? Well, did, did, did Mayor, you know, I mean, did she not know about it? You know, it's to, not just Georgia, though. You have, I want to say, about 14 states are doing the same thing. So, um, Stacey Abrams and her whole committee, the they got themselves <laughs> together and organized um, this whole vote process. I personally didn't want to be around what was considered the COVID and the pandemic mm -hmm. and the long line. So, I capitalized on being able to mail my ballot in so now yeah, it now you, favor. yeah i mean it's convenient you, yeah. can, you can mail in now you have to get other approvals and permission and prove for whatever reason why you need to mail it in yeah. what what is that accomplishing it's suppressing yeah. the vote it is so yes. um you know i don't know what's going to happen 
and you have people who are so power hungry mm-hmm. that they have started to feel like they are losing power exactly. and they, they are know out of options. that they lost power yes <laughs> so yes. now they're trying to take and, and show that they still have some power to do these things and that's what it's all about you know but what has happened has happened and now they want to get back at us for voting and standing up for what was right and my thought is if there was voter fraud and and fake ballots there, was not, cheating, they find anything. there would have been plenty of time and evidence for something to materialize so since that didn't happen or it couldn't be proven for you to go any any governor to go and sign something like that into law is it's, it doesn't make any sense it defines common sense it defines logic and at a point, you're just trying to appease a group who feels like you didn't have a right to win. Preparing for the next election. That's what that is. So we're going to make sure that all of our communities pack a bag. Listen, let's meet at the park next to Take the voting. We, listen, I can't serve you something in line, but toilet. maybe I can... <laughs> Your portable toilet, you know. Maybe we can meet across the street and, and, and give you a brown bag lunch or something or or prepare your own stuff, bring you a chair so that you're not, you know, there's no reason to get out of line. Bring a raincoat, like be prepared. If it's, if it's snowing, bring whatever it is we got to do so that we are um, still able to give our voice. And this is so central because the amount of blood that was shed for us to have the right to go vote. That's, you know, what do you do? You can't strike out. You can't lash out. So they say, go to the polls, beat them at the polls. Now we at the polls, you know, you're changing legislation for the polls. You know, we should start a company, uh, part of our, uh, our company. Uh, you know, they got seat fillers. So Let's let's do our own line fillers. We're gonna cut think? this off the airway <laughs> for somebody else to beat us to the subject. No. Um, yes, well, you know, I mean, because they they have uh, those people that stand in line for tickets. You know, they get tickets at for, for different events. You know, maybe we need to create you know uh, a line filler. You know. Uh, 1-800 line filler. How about that? And how would that work? 1-800 line filler. You, you call <laughs> so, us and let us know if you need somebody to stand in line for you, you know, and we'll send them to that, that address. <laughs> you heard it first right here. See, you can't be giving away free ideas, okay. Mr. Carlisle. You, you know. Darling, I mean, honey. Just call uh, 470-418-7277 for your line filler. <laughs> For you to be saying, listen, I'm still over here. <laughs> you y'all don't have to wait. I told you. <laughs> I know you gotta go to the bathroom, but you I'll don't be have there to hold minute. it. <laughs> well, you know what? Um what do you think? Well, I think if it's something that you want to pursue, we can pursue it. Okay. We're the boys, <laughs> we had the boys to do that, you know, start their own business, you know. <sighs> Okay, yeah, let's let's yeah. chat about that offline. Yes. Okay, so one thing I want to ask: Do you think it's the right to hit people in the pocket to get their attention? Like the major league baseball pulled that that was going to generate billions, yes. not thousands, not millions with the M, billions with a B of income for the Cobb County and the surrounding areas in Georgia. Do you think that you was said- right? He had the audacity to say that that was a number of money, money hungry uh, attempt to to have an event here in Georgia, and and and, and they didn't care that it goes to another uh, state or oh, not. No. So now, when you have other people who feel as equally strong as the, I mean, the uh, Major League Baseball, I mean, because they said it's all about you don't care for people's opportunity to get their vote. He says Stacey Abrams. There was uh, uh, one of Stacey Abrams' uh, um, uh, baby to get the Major League uh, game here, and and the mayor, you know, Mayor Bottoms, 
that was their baby to get the games here. Now they got the games here and, and now they're taking it away. That was not but a money grab uh, opportunity for them. No, it was not. George, listen. That was billions of dollars. Personal businesses are losing money. Here. The we hotels, can, yes. workers, everybody oh stands to lose because somebody decided to too. put something into law without yes. it going through the proper process. And, and guess what? People have a right to take their bag of money yes. and go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think I think we should hit people in the pocket well, that's, because yeah. that's something that only certain people understand. Okay, yeah. you can stand out and pick it, complain. You could do a sit-in. All that is wonderful. You can write all as many letters as you want, and I do believe in the power of the pen. But when you hit people with in the pocket and take your money elsewhere, it wakes them up. So but now, be back next year. but the point is, we are just now scuffling yes, and struggling as a community right. to get jobs and get folks Absolutely. off unemployment and open up these establishments. The restaurant business, I mean, they are really hurting, you know, because a lot of that, I mean, because a lot of times when you, I mean, coming up in high school and or in college, you know, being a waiter or waitress, that, that really, you know, helped you, you know, to have money in your pocket, you know, to go to school you know, and, and pay for things, you know. Now that opportunity has been taken away by the, you know, pandemic. And so, you know, just getting back, you know, and I hear California is going to be opening up totally uh, in June. They open it up back, everything in, is back up to, I mean, to what, what it was in June. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think they, they still, you still have to wear a mask though, but uh, other than that, they're really opening things back up. and. But you know, it might have been wide open. I was gonna say them. Georgia never even really closed down. Yeah. I mean, we've taken a couple of trips and yeah. Yeah. by the grace of God, we've been fine. Um, but it's kind of weird to go other places mm -hmm. and they're just barely opening up. And Atlanta right. has been wide open per the same governor yeah. um from day we one. Out, yeah, we went out to California. There's a lot of people out there, they didn't have any masks on too, you know, a lot of places and and even on the air, airlines, you know, you, you had to uh, make the kids put on a mask, you know, and stuff like we that. We don't have to have a show on that. First of all, when when people are on a white flight, persons. we don't, anybody, yeah, we yeah, don't want people, to kids, be okay. uh, disturbed because you can't handle your children, okay? And you can't handle them without a mask mandate. Now we got a mask mandate. Six times they were asked to, to for the kid to put on their mask or to sit down and put put um, put everything in there. Um, so, and then on top of that, you have uh, scenarios where people are not really um, buying the whole mask thing, but it's it's the law, like. This is the government telling you what you can and cannot do. Right, right. Okay. <sighs> well, that's a, we, we go on and on, but that's a new topic for discussion for next time, for sure. Don't be trying to cut me short because you got a phone call. And so then another thing. No, just wait. <laughs> no. That, well, this has been an awesome, <laughs> awesome conversation yeah. of the soul. Well, oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, and join us next time and tell a friend about us. Yes, we're right here at Crockett Global Inc. Yes, we have an awesome time conversation. Um, so we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. How can they reach you? How can they and connect? You can connect with me at 470-418-7277. And um, at Mr. Carlisle W at yahoo.com. Follow me on Instagram. I am Mr. Carlisle. And we also want to give a shout out to Coach K and his accents, intuitive intellect. Um, you can look him up as well as shout out to Boss Television Network. Boss. Yes. CLJ and the team Boss. keeping us yeah. out. We appreciate you. Please also keep in mind that we are still 
helping our communities through yes. our nonprofit organization, Car Key Global. So if you want to be a part or if you want to be able to help our hands to reach further, we're also always um, asking for your assistance in that manner. I am available at www.iamkikimichelle.com um, to see as many hats and ventures that I'm a part of. I would love to be able to help you to also accomplish your needs. Thank you so much for tuning in to Conversations your, of the Soul. What's your number? Please give out your number where you can be reached. It's at the bottom of the screen. 404. <laughs> Every time I try to close the show, here he come. When I want to talk, he trying to close the show. It's too late. 404-477-7195. Thank y'all so much. Peace.